Just in my hot, hot spot.
Sheriff, are we ready for Mr. Cortez? Uh, we have Mr. Eck here at this facility. Uh, EK? Oh, there's there's Cortez. Okay. Ernie, you got the speaker off on that computer. Two more minutes. Mark, Bernie's in control of security. If he says the kid sits there, the kid sits there. And that's the end of it. That's not a discussion. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Thursday, 10th, 2021. This is the detention hearings for the 323rd Judicial District Court of the State of Texas, the assigned juvenile court for Tarrant County. The purpose of these hearings is first to determine whether a child has been brought into detention, whether probable cause exists to believe that the child may have engaged in delinquent conduct, 
this is not a trial. And the court's determination of whether or not probable cause exists to believe that a child is engaged in delinquent conduct may be made on the basis of hearsay alone. More frankly, what the court will consider are reports forwarded by the police department to the juvenile probation department and then forwarded to the court. All that the court will be doing is first determining probable cause. If the court finds that probable cause exists to believe that the child is engaged in delinquent conduct, then thereafter the court will make a determination of whether the child should remain in detention or be released to a parent or guardian. As part of that consideration, the court considers five statutory factors. <clears throat> Again, this is not a determination of whether or not the child actually did what the police brought him or her in for. Instead, it's just whether there's probable cause to believe that the offense was committed. If you have additional information about your child or about the underlying offense, I ask you to forward that information to the child's appointed attorney. And if you have questions about these proceedings, I also ask you to direct those to the child's attorney. I will remind everyone that you are in a court of law. You are expected to behave yourself accordingly. If you cannot behave yourself accordingly, I ask you to leave right now. We've had some earlier outbursts today. Further outbursts or inconsiderate behavior will not be tolerated. Anyone have any questions about that? Thank you. I will remind all the kids that each of you has the right to remain silent and not say anything at all during this hearing. However, any statements that you may or may not make during this hearing cannot be used against you at a future hearing. Nevertheless, we have two people from the prosecutor's office in the courtroom today. They are taking notes. And anything that you might say, even if you think it doesn't mean anything at all, might lead those people at the prosecutor's office to dig up more information about you that could be used against you at a future hearing. And so before you say anything, I would encourage you to talk first with your attorney about what you want to say. That way he or she can advise you on whether or not you really should say it. Each of you also has the right to an attorney in this case. And I will be appointing an attorney to represent each of you um, if that is an appropriate situation. First case on our docket this afternoon is Michael Anthony Cortez. Are you Mr. Cortez? All right, Mr. Cortez, your attorney, uh, Frank Adler, could not be here this afternoon. He's tied up in another court. So I'm appointing Larry Beaver to be your attorney for purposes of this hearing. All right. Mr. Marquez, what brings Mr. Cortez to court today? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, he's been in our facility and also back in jail. His first came back in January, January this year. He was originally brought in back on the 19th of January, but he had been out of custody for all back on the 21st of January for the death of a firearm, which the incident occurred in the June of January. All right, Mr. Marquez, can you speak a little louder there? He's just what's going on. It's hard for me to hear. Uh, on the 19th of January, we brought in for. Uh, Criminal trespass and lawful carrying a weapon. This is reporting to take on the 19th of January of this year. About a 4 a.m. 911 call was sent out for suspicious activity on a residential area. The caller said that two men were inside the car. Nothing suspicious. The officers arrived and not see them right away. So two showed up and they were not. The officers waited and they saw them. And when the two men saw the officers, they ran on the road. Almost as I ran the right way, so Michael was there apprehended after a short uh, look for him. On his person, he had a knife and a loaded uh, 45 caliber magazine on his person. Uh, and then on the 20th uh, of December, he was referred out to the for aggravated robbery. That incident happened on October 5th, uh, 2020. That report indicates that him and another individual went up to his car to hang out to smoke marijuana. When they found a place to park, Michael was in the back seat without a handgun. That gun point was in the car. He's currently on probation, is that correct? And he's scheduled for a hearing on his motion to modify on June 18th, is that correct? Um, Mr. Cortez, you are at our Green Bay facility, correct? 
All right. Um, cause, I don't know. Uh, because you're not in our juvenile detention facility, I cannot, uh, I'm unable to determine what your detention level is, whether or not you can obey the rules if I were to release you to a parent or guardian. Furthermore, I have indication that you have not one, but two weapons offices in the last six months. And so on that basis, I'm find that you're a danger to the community. If I were to release you, you'll have a hearing before Judge Kim um, in just a few days, and he'll make a determination then. But for now, I'm going to order that you be detained. That'll be the order of the court. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sheriff, for bringing this gentleman. All right, are you Mr. Eck? Okay. All right, Mr. Eck, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. And your attorney, Boyd Moody, is here in my courtroom right now. Do you see him on the screen? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. Hello, Mr. Houston. Mr. Houston, what brings Mr. Eck to court today? On May 22nd, 2021, Stephen arrested by the White Settlement Police Department as a warrant issued by the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Richmond, what are your thoughts? Headed to safety. safety. I also hear you're being detained until he goes there. Mr. Mooney. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be right now, so he's going to stay here. That's what we're looking for. And I told his mother where we go, but I need to talk to the prosecutor and see what they're going to do about this case. Uh, because they're not going to do anything about placing him until this case. All right. Um, let's see. But you're in talks with Mr. Neal on that? Uh, well, I mean, I just found that out just a few minutes ago. All right. All right. Mr. Eck, uh, I think you know your plan coming up, but as for now, I'm going to go ahead and order you to be detained. All right, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, Sheriff. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. Good to see you. Okay, you too. All right. Okay. Why do we need noise coming out of that one? They can, the audio is still going into that. They just don't, I don't need the feedback. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, Bernie, uh, Stephanie wants you to turn that speaker on. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Well, it's still picking up noise over there. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm. See, I'm getting bad feedback. All right, Keandre Lemon. Mr. Beaver. All right. Mr. Lemon, sit up straight for him. Take hands out of your pockets. This is an out of custody detention hearing to determine whether I should take you into custody or, or allow you to remain in the community. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. Your attorney, Ray Hall, couldn't be here this afternoon. He has another commitment in another court. So I'm appointing Mr. Beaver to be your attorney for purposes of this hearing. All right, Mr. Lemire. 
Your Honor, I received a uh, customer referral on Keandre on 68.214, the Office of Deadly Conduct and Charging Firearms. Uh, according to the police report on 5-15-2021, at approximately 300 hours, police were dispatched to the Stallion Point Apartments. When officers arrived, uh, they saw a young woman uh, with a, who had been accidentally shot and being attended to by MedStar. They contacted youth mother. She came, she had, they live in those apartment complex. She came down, asked if uh, they could interview you. He consented to be interviewed. According to him, he, two of his friends came to pick him up, one being a young man and the young girl who was shot. He was sitting in the back seat. The gun belonged to his friend. He was passing it back to his friend and it went off, hitting the young lady in the back shoulder. Officers continued to interview. They asked where the gun was. He said he had thrown it in the field across the street. They looked, they went, he showed them where the gun was. At that time, they allowed him to remain in the custody of his mother. He's currently on probation for aggravated robbery, is that correct? Yes, and as a condition of his probation, I believe it's condition 11, he's to have no firearms, is that correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Richmond, what says the state? Mr. Lemire, does he have a parent or guardian here today? Yes, sir. Are you mom? Stand up. Um, you're so far away from everybody. If you feel comfortable, you can pull your mask down, and but stay where you are. What's he doing with a gun? Uh, from my understanding, there was a gun in the car, and he was shooting it in the car. Um, and he was asking for his gun when the gun was discharged, and he was shot. Um, he had no gun. All right, mom, did you did you get a copy of the conditions of probation as well? I did. Did you read over them? You remember that condition says no firearms? Oh, so you jumped in the same conclusion I am, right? Tragic event for him. For him, for everyone. For everyone. What was he doing out at eleven fifteen at night? Did you let him go out at eleven fifteen at night? So who who was at the house who let him go out that late at night? No, that didn't answer my question. Who else was in the house? So he was unsupervised. That was a yes or no question. Was he unsupervised? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Lemon, I find that if I were to allow you to remain in the public, you would continue to be a danger to yourself and or others. You also do not have adequate supervision at home, so I'm ordering that you be detained. Thank you, ma'am. Angel Araujo. And I just butchered your last name. I apologize. What's the correct pronunciation? Well, no, you tell me how to say it. Arajo. Okay, I got I got close. I just butchered the vowel. All right, Ms. Rojas, what brings Mr. Ajo to court today? According to the map, um, he left the home to go to the Phoenix apartment in Arlington. He didn't have any timeout crew. 
Uh, we requested a DTA and it was issued for him at that time. Um, the offense of the offense details on the burden of motor vehicle indicate that on the 5th of uh, February, he was involved in a burglary of a motor vehicle. He and a female suspect were seen on video surveying, surveillance breaking into vehicles. He was identified, uh, detectives talked to him and he admitted to breaking into the vehicle and that was an in-custody referral. On the aggravated assault, uh, I'm sorry, the aggravated robbery, uh, he was referred out of custody on that one on February the 26th. And that involved um, the victim reporting that he was taking his daughter to the store when he was approached by Angel, uh, and Angel pointed his rifle at him demanding his property. Pointed a what at him? A rifle. Oh, okay. The victim's uh, daughter was able to identify Angel through clothing, and when office, uh, detectives met with Angel, he admitted to that to that uh, offense and indicated that he was under uh, the influence of Xanax. He did demand the victim's property at that time. Um, that that resulted in a progress report submitted to the court and that's how he got the first initial detention. And he does have a history with our department. Okay. So you have a parent or guardian here today? Doesn't mom indicated that she was unable to be here today for the work. However, she's willing to come and pick him up if he's released. Mr. Beaver. Your Honor, I know that I would like to help alleviate the court's concerns, and I think that what I would need to do is speak to a parent to make sure that there's going to be adequate supervision if the court does release him. And Your Honor, if I may add, he is scheduled for a psychological evaluation, and also there's a placement search that's been ordered. And, and do we. On the 29th. How many times has he been on electronic monitor in the past? This is his second time on the EM. And a five month probation for assault. So the remind me again the DTA back in March. What was that for? It was for the out of custody. So he was he came in and in custody on the road with burglary of motor vehicle, and then we released him at the detention uh, level. He then had him out of custody for the aggravated robbery, and we we submitted a progress report that resulted in the DTA. Okay. And he was released in April on that on that DTA on the 15th of April. And he was on the EM for a month when the uh, this alert generated the EM violation. You were so close. Because normally after about 30 days, the probation asks comes to the judges and they ask if it can be removed. And if everything's going like it's supposed to, we generally cut it off. Um, I don't have a parent or guardian to release you to today, and I, given your history and everything, I'd want to talk to mom first. So I'm going to order that you be detained today. Um, Mr. Beaver, if you'll communicate with Mr. Adler, and um, if Mr. Adler decides it's appropriate to have another hearing, attorney requested hearing, um, we're open to that, but I'd need mom here to talk to her first before I feel comfortable. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Thank you. On second thought, uh, sir, oh. sit back down. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, way bad. I thought it was my bad. Yeah, no, not like that. You gonna snatch your papers, throw some attitude in court? Do you, do you remember me at the very beginning reminding everybody that this is a court of law and that you're supposed to act appropriately. Do you remember me telling everybody that? What did you just do? 
Yeah, like a two-year-old who didn't get his way. You, sir, are now ineligible for an attorney requested detention hearing. So you will sit back in detention, and unless you're level 1O between now and the next detention hearing, you are not going home. You throw more attitude back in front with the detention staff, then you'll stay there until you can maintain level 1O for an entire month. Because this little kind of tirade, like a two-year-old, is unacceptable. Stephanie, please make a note that he is not to be released at the next detention hearing unless he makes, unless he maintains level 1-0 between now and then with no dips to even level 1 acceptable. You will not even be eligible for consideration. Not going to have behavior like that. Just take him back. That's okay. Right, Martin Cabrera. All right, Ms. Rojas, what brings Mr. Cabrera to court today? Currently on probation. No, Your Honor. He was uh, last day on, on the last term of probation was uh, April the 29th of 2020. And when was he placed on probation? Um, so he was placed on probation on September the 4th, 2018, for evading arrest, and that was one, for one year. Um, on the 29th of January 2019. What are your thoughts? Your Honor, I know this is not an evidentiary hearing, just looking at the, the detention report, but it just seems kind of strange that the family, if they were actually assaulted, they decided to wait two days to make a police report. And, and I, know, I know this will all come out later. Um, I'm going to find that the probable cause exists to believe that you've engaged in delinquent conduct. Um, so, does he have a parent or guardian here today? Yes, he does. Um, he's right in the middle. All right. Either Mr. Beaver can translate. Okay. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, if you'd like to ask her some questions. Okay. So, I'll, I'll do it in Spanish. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, Your Honor, I asked her if you were to release him, would there be somebody there to supervise him? And so she puts money through Friday and, and during the day. So, so there would not be. Okay. Um, and it's a legend, because I don't have a copy of the police report, oh, that uh, he had a weapon? Yes, a green uh, handgun with a green laser. Where did he get the pistol? She, did, she never saw a pistol. I outsource armas in Sukasa? Were executed a search warrant at her home, and they kicked down the door when she was at work and did not find any weapon. Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and order that you be detained today. Uh, the allegations concern me about possible stalking, some other things, the fact that the police believe there were probable there's probable cause to search your home and that they got a judge to sign that warrant suggests there's something else here that I don't know about. What I want you to get out of today's hearing is that your conduct caused your mom's house to be that door to be kicked in by police. Okay. What happens after the police left? Somebody else could have broken in and stolen everything in your house. And that's all tied back to your decisions, okay? Your decisions are endangering your mom. You can either continue making those decisions, the same decisions, or make different decisions that don't endanger your mom. Totally up to you, all right? As for today, I'm going to go ahead and order you be detained. That'll be the order of the court. Um, let's uh, handle that at a different time. That's not appropriate right now. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Thank you. All right, Roderick Chambers. Mr. Chambers, uh, your attorney, Mr. Gladstone, couldn't be here today. He's tied up in another court, so I'm going to ask Mr. Beaver to fill in for him. Um, so before you say anything, if there's something you want to tell me, make sure you talk it over with Mr. Beaver first. Don't just blurt it out, because we got two people from the prosecutor's office who are listening. You don't want to give them any ammo to use against you, right? All right. <laughs> Ms. Burns, how are you? Long time no see. Oh, better than I deserve. So, what brings Mr. Chambers to court today? Yesterday morning, early at the morning, the White Settlement Police Department responded to the Pacific Mail Group of Green Car Vehicle with a mysterious flashlight. Upon their arrival, they located Roderick and another 17 year old male. Um, Roderick pulled out a vaping lead pocket, which resulted in a search. At that time, they found uh, three credit cards, a nine flashlights, some miscellaneous items, and a vehicle key. Assisting officers canvassed the neighborhood and uh, pressed the alarm key five and was able to locate the key, um, or excuse me, able to locate the owner of the vehicle. Um, multiple vehicles in his possession had been went through. He said no one had permission, uh, permission I'm sorry, to go in the vehicles or take the property. Um, upon his arrival, he did test positive for marijuana and benzodiazepines. I have been in communication with his outpatient counselor, TYRC, and they are willing to um, admit him into inpatient. 
and have a bed available on June 17th and will come pick them up and take them straight to inpatient. And these alleged BOVs, what time in the morning? 346 a.m. Whoa. Does he have a mom here? His grandmother is here. Grandmother. What was this young man doing out at 346 in the morning? Did you give him permission to go out? Uh-huh. And so this was all news to you, right? He snuck out of the house without so much as giving you a kiss on the cheek. Is that what a grandson's supposed to do to his grandmother? And then where's he getting the marijuana he's testing positive for? Did You didn't give it to him, did you? you that stuff's not laying around in your house for the, the kids to come along, pick up, eat a brownie or something. That's not That's not your place, right? See all the disrepute you bring it on your grandmother? Why would you do that to this lady? You don't want to, don't answer me, all right? I just want you to understand your actions impact your grandmother. I mean, have you, are you you're the one who's raising him? So, you've opened up your home to him, making sure he's got a safe place to live, food, clothes, pouring out the love, and he's just walking away at 3.46 in the morning, not so much as a kiss on the cheek before he heads out the door. That's not the way you raised him, is it? Okay. That's right. He's at TYRC right now. He's in outpatient right now, but he will go inpatient. Is he currently on probation? Yes, he is on probation for unlawful carrying of a weapon. The circumstances of that offense was a similar situation where they responded to prowlers for vehicles, and he, a weapon was found on him at the time he was searched for the it was a stolen weapon. It didn't say specifically if it came out of the vehicle or not, but it wasn't um, from anyone in the household or anything like that. So, grandmother, you're hearing a pattern here, right? Yeah. Out prowling, getting caught, coming back to detention, tested positive. I'm, I'm guessing because he's already been sent to TYRC on an outpatient basis, he's tested positive in the past, correct? He actually has not. I'm not sure how the outpatient recommendation came about because their initial drug test for him on April 29th was negative. I tested him on May 27th and it was negative, so this is new news. Mm. All right. Well, just because you shamed your grandmother, I'm going to order you be detained. All right. You're also testing positive, which means, you know, you're a danger to yourself. I'll let you go. Let's, you know, let's give him a shot, get to level 1-0, maintain that for me. We'll see what happens in 10 business days, okay? Um, we will take that up when a progress report is presented or uh, when Mr. Gladstone asks the court to consider that. So, all right. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Grandmother, thank you. All right, Mr. Camino. Is Raphael here? He is not. All right, Mr. Bieber, thank you. All right, what brings Mr. Camino to court today? Report uh, a worker at uh, the Chevron on Wichita Street. Uh, you came to the drive through an hour prior to 
when he noticed that there was a weapon in the console. They left for about an hour, came back, and at that time, feeling unsafe, he called the police. When the police arrived, they witnessed two, two males in, in the vehicle, one being Ricardo and the other was his older brother. Uh, they conducted a search, found a Glock 19, where you told him that it was, you also said they didn't came to on his person. When he came in, he was positive for cocaine, methamphetamines, amphetamines, and marijuana. Okay. Mr. Beaver, does he have, uh, Mr. Lemire, does he have a, a parent guardian here today? Yes, wow, were you aware of the drug test results? No, sir. Does that scare you? Do you, do you have any knowledge of him using cocaine in the past? No. This is new? And the fact that he had, he's alleged to have had K2 on him as well. That's, does that scare you? Yes, sir. Why does it scare you? Because you, you and I are old enough. We know that those chemicals fry young brains, right? Mr. Beaver? Your Honor, if I may ask the mother, if the judge were to release your son to go home with you, what sort of steps can you take or have you taken to make sure that he's not going to leave the house without permission and that he's going to do what you want? He's not under my supervision anymore. I handed it over to the sister. They're looking at the sister. They don't know how to control. I handed it to him. He's not under my supervision anymore. Okay, so you're living with your own sister right now? Yeah. I'm sorry, do you have any children in the house? No. So, what? Yes, I don't know what you're doing. Remember those sisters? Okay. And do you work? Yes. Okay. So, would it be time to give you a loan at your house? No, because my boyfriend works in jail, and I can't afford to pay for it. And you want him to come home with you right now? Yes, but I want to. So I think that's something that you would have to address right now. I don't think that the court has, well, the court could order something like that, t telling him that he's not allowed to speak. Ricardo, you, you cut off your monitor. So I know that if I let you go right now, you're just going to cut it off again. All right. I'm not going to close the door to you because I really like your family. But you've already had your freebie. We let you off, let you out on the monitor. You broke our trust. Now you've got to earn it back. The way you do that is you get to level 1-0 and you've got to maintain it. I'm not going to tell you how long you have to maintain it, but it's got to be long enough to where either you impress me or you impress Judge Kim with model behavior in the back. Anything less than perfect model behavior, not going to impress me, and you're not going home. It's up to you to earn that back because you've destroyed the trust with me. You've destroyed the trust with your family. And once, that's, once you've destroyed it by your own decisions, it's up to you to earn it back. Because nobody in life is going to give you everything. At some point, you've got to start earning it. That point starts today. That good? All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you, sir. That concludes today's detention hearings. Thank you, everyone.